Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, The End is Not Near, The End is Here. I know many of you are weary, many of you are discouraged, many of you that are watching for the Lord's soon return have people saying to you, oh, if they believe in Jesus, oh, he's not coming back for, you know, uh, 10, 20, 50 years. He's not coming back in this lifetime. You're crazy. Just live your life. Live your life and let whatever happens going to happen. I mean, that's the general attitude today, um, even amongst believers, uh, when you bring up the Lord's soon return. I wanted to encourage you. Again, any of you that are weary, that are discouraged, right? I wanted to encourage you today. Uh, a few days ago, I had put up a community post and it said the following, all right? I very, very clearly heard in my spirit today, the end is not near, the end is here. About a week or so, or so about a week or so ago, I heard, this is not a drill, Jesus is coming. Now we know that God's timing is not our timing. However, I think it's very, very clear based off what we are seeing unfold in the world right now and what our Bible says that we can say with confidence that Jesus Christ is at the door and that trumpet is about to sound. His return is not 20 or sorry, his return is not 10, 20 or 50 years down the road. The end is not near. The end is here. Whether that means days, weeks, months or a couple years, the fact remains that the rubber band will eventually snap. And the way things are converging right now like never before, I think we can all say with confidence that the time is at hand. Keep looking up, keep telling people Jesus is coming soon, keep telling them that today is a day of salvation and that they, and that they need to put their faith and their trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now and in his death, burial, and resurrection. Time is running out. Then I shared Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Again, folks, the end is not near. The end is here. Just look at the last two years. Ever since this medical emergency shut down the entire world, look at what's just happened in the last two years, right? And people want to talk about 10, 20, 50 years down the road, 100, 120 years down the road, not in this lifetime. Are you out of your mind? Again, we know God's timing is not our timing, but the fact still remains. Look at what's happening right now around the world. Again, ever since this medical emergency again, shut down the world about two years ago, this is absolutely conditioning people to accept the future Antichrist who has not been revealed yet. He will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. All right? This is setting the stage for a coming new world order, a one world cur currency. And again, it's conditioning people to eventually accept the coming mark of the beast during the coming tribulation period, which we are not in yet. That rubber band keeps holding back and it eventually will snap. Whether it's 2021, whether it's 2022, 2023, 2024, and I'm not saying it is. I'm looking around this world. I'm saying, how could it be? But God's timing is not our, God's timing is not our timing. But the fact still remains. When you look at your Bible, you look at what's happening around the world right now. Things are converging like never before. It proves several things. Again, the Bible is real. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back quickly. Now I want to read, I wanted to read Habakkuk 2.3 again. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. You hear that? But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And make no mistake about it. Again, read Habakkuk 2.3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end 
it shall speak and not lie. And make no mistake about it, it is speaking right now before our very eyes. Jesus is coming. He is coming, and he's coming one day very soon again. The end is not near. The end is here. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world right now. You notice something's not right? It's not. This ship is sinking, just like the Titanic sank. And boy, did it sink fast. Those that survived were those that got on the lifeboats. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. And that lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. It's believing. It's putting your faith and your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ for you on that cross at Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, paying your sin debt in full with his blood. So you could be reconciled back to him, so you could be forgiven of your sins and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And if you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. We serve a holy, a just, and a perfect God. And again, we are all sinners. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on the cross of Calvary so you could be forgiven of your sins Again, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. We read in Romans 5, 8, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ took upon your sins, the sins of the entire world, he took upon himself. He paid it in full with his blood. But you have to believe that. You have to put your faith and your trust in his blood that he shed for you. That he paid it all for you on the cross with his blood. But the bottom line is, none of us are promised another second here on this earth. We can breathe our last breath at any moment. And the reality is, heaven and hell are very real literal places. And you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's horrific. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that's going to save you. In Acts 4.12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. In John 14.6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And in 1 Timothy 2, 5, we read, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. Your own works, human efforts, you trying to be a good person and earn your way to heaven, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that's going to save you, and that is Jesus Christ and him alone. He's the lifeboat. If you try to take any other lifeboat off the sinking ship, it will lead to an eternity separated from God. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, today's the day. The end is not near. The end is here. Don't wait another second because that trumpet is fixing to sound. I love you, but again, most importantly, Jesus Christ loves you and he wants you to be with him forever. But you have free will. I can't make the choice for you. But just look around this world. Look at everything that's going on. Look at what your Bible says. And again, you will see the Bible is real. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back soon. And you do not want to be here for what's coming on this planet. So choose Jesus today. Choose newness of life today. Choose heaven today. Because tomorrow is not promised. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly. 
one day very soon at the appointed time, sooner than most of us even realize. Keep watching with me, and God bless you all.